Hey, what's up, boy? Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you all about revoked applications or why some of the applications that you install through my videos all of a sudden just stop working. Now, I thought this was a good time to make this video because Happy Chick, an application that was around for quite some time, recently stopped working, which kind of sucks. And I really want to inform you guys about how all of this really works and so you can understand why these applications are revoked or stop working. So with that being said, let's learn a little. All right. Now, before we begin with the video, you all just saw the new intro for the channel that I'm gonna use for the rest of my videos for the upcoming future. Honestly, I think that intro is pretty freaking cool, but I would love to hear what you all have to say. If you thought the intro was cool, leave a like on this video or share your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you all have to say because I'm gonna use that for the rest of the videos to come. Anyways, let's get back on topic. So many of you all may hear me say revoked a lot in my videos and in this video And what I mean by that is that the application has stopped working in many different ways So um, for example, you install an application through one of my videos You trust it, you play it, you love it And then all of a sudden you go to open the app and it crashes You go to open it again and it tells you to trust it again You go to trust it and it just doesn't trust anymore So what that means is that the application has been revoked revoked or shut down and how these shutdowns work is that Apple pretty much just shuts it down they say that's it that application will no longer open and that's the end of that you won't be seeing that application open again unless you install a newer version so the next thing you may be asking yourself is why is Apple revoking these applications I don't understand why they need to shut them down well the way Apple likes their devices to work is that they only like applications to be installed from the App Store, a central hub for you to get any application that makes it on there. However, the App Store has a lot of guidelines and rules that applications must go through and amend to before they make it onto the App Store. Now, many applications like GBA for iOS, Happy Chick, INDS, Moviebox, and applications like that break the terms of service or agreement that Apple has and that is why they don't make it onto the App Store. Now you may be thinking if these applications don't come from the App Store and that's the only way that Apple wants you to get the applications, how do I even get them on my iOS device through websites like iEmulators and other things like that? Well this alternate form of distribution actually comes from Apple itself. It's an enterprise developer program which is basically a program that is made for companies to distribute applications within their company without letting that application get out to the world. So for example, a big company wants an application that they only want their employees to use, but not their customers. They'd get this Apple Enterprise Program Certificate and distribute the application that way so that only their employees with access to that Enterprise Certificate can install the application. Now basically how this Enterprise Program works is that you get an application and you attach it to that Enterprise Program and through a special link anyone can install the application but all they have to do is trust it via their settings. Now there's tons of companies that use this program for their employees and different things like that and is why it exists today, which is actually pretty awesome. However, websites like iEmulators and other places get these certificates from other companies and sign applications like GBA for iOS, INDS, Happy Chick, and much more so that they can distribute it to everyone that wants to download it. Now this of course isn't the purpose of that enterprise program and those applications shouldn't be on iOS devices via Apple's terms of service and agreement and that is why that they eventually get shut down. Now that you know why applications get revoked and how you actually get these applications on your iOS device although Apple doesn't want them, the next question would probably be how do I fix these applications that are revoked? Well, the easiest way is just to wait and see if a new application is signed to another enterprise certificate and hopefully that one installs and trusts. So when an application is revoked, that certificate and that enterprise program is gone. 
that's not gonna work anymore. So what other websites like iEmulators do is that they get another enterprise program and sign an application to it. However, like I mentioned earlier, this is extremely expensive and it's hard to come by. And that's why applications don't immediately come back, but eventually they do and you know that these websites are always working to get these applications available to you. Now besides just waiting for a new link to become available and a newer version to install on your iOS device, the problem still remains that Apple can shut down that new enterprise program whenever they want and kind of just leaves us in an ever rounding loop of getting new certificates every time one gets shut down and the user having to reinstall the application every time it gets shut down, which can kind of be annoying. However, there's other alternatives to get these applications that you would like. Um, there's things like Cydia Impactor where you can use a computer to actually install these applications on your own iOS device and I have a tutorial on that if you'd like to check it out. You can click here. Um, but besides that, there's also jailbreaking your iOS device, which unfortunately there isn't a jailbreak for iOS 10 as I'm releasing this video. And finally, there is the build store, which is a paid alternative. Now, you may be thinking, why does the build store have to be paid? I don't understand. Why can't it just be free the same way that iEmulators releases their applications for free? So the way that the build store distributes their application is a completely different way from the app store or the enterprise program we just discussed. It's actually a different method that I'm not going to discuss in this video. However, just know that this alternative method that the build store uses is very costly even more costly than the enterprise program which is already pretty costly itself and that's why they charge their users to use their service which is a hundred percent guarantee that you'll be able to install the applications that they provide and that they'll work a hundred percent for a full year without apple ever being able to shut it down which is a pretty good compromise for the price you pay for the applications you want instead of having to go the other route of the enterprise program where you don't know when the application will shut down. Now, at the end of the day, the build store and the enterprise program that websites like iEmulator uses are both very expensive and they cost money. The difference is that the enterprise program isn't as expensive and iEmulators and other websites just take the cost and pay it for themselves so that other people can enjoy it for free as opposed to the build store that's a lot more expensive and there's really no way that could ever be free. So they charge their users to keep the service up and running and so that they can enjoy the applications that they want if they're willing to pay. So with all that being said, this has been a pretty long video. I don't know how many of you all stayed to this point of the video and actually wanted to know more about how the applications work and how all of this kind of functions. So I hope I was able to make myself clear that you guys learned something and you understand how these applications work. Um, I will continue to keep a lookout for websites like iEmulators and other different ways to install applications on your iOS device like date tricks, airplane tricks, and things like that to inform you guys and show you guys the best and easiest way to get the applications and emulators that you love to play. So I hope you appreciate my effort and um, as I mentioned earlier, learn something from this video. If you did, then please hit that like button as it's greatly appreciated. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer you. And I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and welcome to the operation.